Welcome back. This is an RC high pass filter with a load. Okay, so we're just going to play with a high pass filter this time and we want to add a load to it. Right? So you can make a filter and then have it drive something. Like an example would be a a speaker, you know, like if you have a big stereo system at home, which I still have, with the, I have a big subwoofer, and then I've got like a mid-range, you know, speaker, and then there's a little one. There's three different speakers. So the input from the amplifier is, is filtered. There's a filter inside the speaker box that filters out certain frequencies and sends the low frequencies to the woofer, right? That's there's a, So there's a low-pass filter that sends the low-frequency signals to the big speaker, and then there's a high pass filter that sends the high fre frequency s signals to the little speaker, the tweeter. And then there's a band pass filter that sends the middle range frequencies to the middle, the medium sized speaker. And so the speakers are the loads in those, in those things. And the, the speakers have an impedance of them, of their own, right? There, there's a big magnet in a speaker, so it has a, it has an inductance. And it also has a resistance in it. And that load will affect the filter. It'll affect the cutoff frequency and the attenuation of the filter. So you need to throw, you need to compensate, uh, you need to consider the load when you're designing a high pass filter or, or a low pass filter, or any kind of filter. You need to consider the load. All right. So we're given that um, this is a high pass filter. You're given that with a cutoff with the mega sub C, the cutoff freak equal to 800 hertz. <clears throat> right? So, if that's about a good number for a speaker, you know, human auditory range, that is the range of sounds that we can hear, is like 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. Less than that if you're older, like me. Um, there's certain songs that I only remember how they sound. I can't hear the high frequency symbols anymore. I just remember them. Anyway, 800 hertz is somewhere between vocals and you know a lot of vocal signals are around there. 1,000 hertz, something like that. There's lower frequency components too. But anyway, this stuff would go to the you know the woofer, I guess, maybe the mid range speaker. Anyway, um, so then we're asked to find. We're asked to find the resistance of this high pass filter. What is that? And then how does the cutoff frequency change when you add a resistive load, right? With a resistive load of 68 kilo ohms. So we'll have a frequency, uh, we'll have a high pass filter that has 800 hertz cutoff frequency but then we're going to hook it up to a load in this case it's just a resistive load and how does that going to change the cutoff frequency in real life like if this were a speaker the load would have not just resistance but it would have some kind of impedance like like i like i mentioned before a speaker would have a big inductive value um, that kind of problem would be harder but this one turns out to be relatively easy because there was the load is purely resistive. But first, the straw speaker, so I'm sorry, the uh, just the filter. So we've got an output signal. Let's use. <clears throat> so this freak, remember, there's two different kinds of high pass filters. This is the one we're looking at. So this is given that it's this kind, the one where you're measuring the output voltage across the resistor, because there's another kind. So you have to sort of be told that for this problem. So there's an input voltage as a function of time, and then an output voltage as a function of time. And then later on, we're going to hook up a load. So right now, this is the filter. And we're going to hook up a, a purely resistive load later on. So this is the load we're going to hook up. This is R sub L, the load, that we'll hook up later. And how does it change the operation of the 
of the filter. Also, you're given this. This is 20 nanofarads. Okay, so this is what you're given. You're given this kind of high pass filter with this capacitive value. And you're told that later on you're going to hook up a resistive load to it. But first, we want to know what is the resistive value for just the filter to give us this original design cutoff frequency of 800 hertz. So for A, we're asked to find what is the uh, resistor value for no load condition. So we'll just use this omega sub C is 1 over RC. Just use that guy. And we need omega sub C in um, radians per second. It's given in hertz right now. So we need to um, we need to multiply times 2 pi, and we're going to get 5027. Now it's in radians per second. So uh, resistance, just solving this guy here for resistance, it's going to be uh, 1 over omega C, the cutoff frequency, times the capacitance. So it's 1 over 5027, and then the 20 nanofarad cap, you end up with 9.95 kilo ohms. So that's the value of this resistance that, you know, discounting the load at this time, that will give us this cutoff frequency of, omega, of uh, 800 hertz. Okay, so for part B, we're going to add, or I should say hook up, the R sub L load, and then what is the new omega sub C? So there's a there's a trick here. Like if this were not a resistive load, you would have to model the the whatever element was in here. You know, it could be inductors and capacitors and stuff, and you'd have to calculate a whole new transfer function. It would be uh, pages and pages of ugly. Uh, Laplace stuff, but we have a trick here. That's so basically the trick to avoid some ugly voltage division derivation is just to realize. So here's the trick. The trick is to realize that when we hook this load up, we get lucky and the two resistors are in parallel. So so redrawing that. Um, And I drew it in the, for some reason I drew it in the Laplace domain, even though it doesn't really matter, but, so this is 1 over SC, and this is R. There's probably a reason that I did it that way, I don't remember what it is right now. And then now we're hooking up R sub L. Z0 plus one. Okay, so this is our new circuit with the filter hooked up to some load. The trick is to realize that these guys, we could just call these guys R equivalent and just, you, just view it as one resistor so it doesn't change the, the filter stuff, doesn't change the equations. Okay, so R equivalent is just 9.95 in parallel with 68. These two resistors, the 9.95, uh, kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the uh, the load, right? We calculated the 9.95 R originally, but now we're throwing this 68 kilo ohm resistor in in uh, parallel with that. Okay, so this is 8.68 kilo ohms. So the new the new omega sub C is going to be one over R equivalent. C, it's going to be 1 over 8.68 times 10 to the third over 20 times 10 to the minus ninth capacitance. You end up with 917 hertz. Okay, so we got lucky on this one. I chose it on purpose because it's, it's simple. If this were more than a resistive load, it, it would be more complicated. But the point is the original filter 
was designed to give us an 800 hertz cutoff frequency. But when you actually use the filter by hooking it up to some other load, that cutoff frequency changes. So you need to consider the load when you're designing a, uh, a frequency. So that's the, the lesson here is that the load, loads affect the, fil the filter uh, characteristics. And you need to account for that. All right. Hope that was useful. See you next time.